Since you're not here in person, I'll walk you through the process. All the corn we bring in comes from within, most of, almost all of it comes within 30 miles. There's a few outside of that. Very high percentage comes in within 10 miles, just out of convenience. The closer they are to here, the easier we are to deliver here versus somebody else. And as you get farther away, they become closer to someone else. So we have hundreds of producers though that sell us their corn. Uh, and we have, and again, we bring in about 25 million bushels or close to uh, every year. What we're watching now is an uh, inbound corn delivery. So there's two compartments in this truck. So we will probe uh, both compartments to test for quality. So that's a vacuum hose going in and you can hear the sound of the kernels going through the tubes and the pipes being vacuumed back into the office. So that once we have our sample, the truck is clear to go. And we're testing it over here. So uh, Amanda's going to have to slow down for us. So here's the sample we just we just pulled coming in, and you can see the see the corn. So this uh, looks like new new crop coming coming in. Um, so you can kind of tell by the by the color and, and size. So that's a, that's a pretty big sample, but we only need a fraction of that. So we get a, all the, those three those three samples are. are create a composite of that load. Yep. Then we can run through the moisture tester and did a test weight. So this one's right where we want it. 14.4% moisture. So this will be getting full price today and 58.8 uh, pounds per bushel test weight. And for those uh, overseas, a bushel has 56 pounds for those on the metric system. This bucket is a, a small sample of all the corn that has been received today. So this will be, be homogenized, blended, and, uh, and, ground, and ground up into a sample. And this is what we test for mycotoxins. The first step is milling into flour. The next step is uh, combining into a slurry. That hum you hear is the mills grinding the corn into flour. And this is where the DDGs are sto stored, the Dakota Gold again, this silo, this concrete silo right here. So they're coming from those bins where the corn goes down through the floor when the trucks come in with augers up into those bins, from those bins, back across conveyors over, over to these mills uh, where it's ground into flour and then sent over to the plant for processing and fermentation. So this is the control room. Mentioned the first step was the uh, grinding and the milling of the corn into flour. When it comes into the building, it's introduced in what we call our slurry tank, where it's where the flour is combined with water, enzymes, yeast, and other things to start the fermentation process. So that is blended up uh, and compounded, and then that flour is fermented for three to four days. After three to four days, the yeast have con and enzymes, the enzymes convert the starch into sugars, and then the yeast actually consumes sugar. So once the yeast and enzymes have consumed all the starches that they can easily get to in that amount of time, it then goes into, starts processing into distillation, where we, through boiling and heat, we add uh, our extract, the, separate the ethanol, the alcohol, from the water and the solids, which are the, eventually going to be the feed product. Uh, from there, it goes, uh, the, the, the distillation will, will get, the alcohol goes out one end, but then that water and solids processes further, further through centrifuges where it spins out the water, and then that wet product is dried through dryers, the corn oil is extracted, uh, a number of things happen along, along that way, but it is all controlled here. And you, there's a different screens for, for, for dryers, for fermentation, for distillation. Uh, and a lot of this can be, I can view this at home. Uh, they can see this at our Sioux Falls office or any other plant. Uh, so if we do have upset conditions or anything else, we can call in help or assistance and other people can see what we're doing. And it's one of the really neat things is being able to see what's going in on the process at any time, whether it be corn oil, slurry, again, uh, and this is all run with uh, three people run the, run the plant uh, during, during uh, most times. So everything is controlled here. The drying process, once it's done, is, takes only about 10 minutes. 
once it actually goes through the dryers, it goes very, very quickly. And we, do, we use uh, ring dryers rather than dr rotary dryers. So it's done at a cooler temp so that the amino acids and some of the other things critical for animal nutrition don't see as much heat. Again, we're trying to preserve as much nutritional value uh, while making as, on the, on the co-products or byproducts, co-products as we can while making uh, optimizing alcohol process at the same time. This is our, our lab where we test all our outgoing products and that covers everything we sell. We'll focus on the distiller grain side, the feed side. Uh, we keep a sample of every truck outbound. So we keep a bag of this in case there are any concerns with uh, product quality, hard to unload, uh, spe not meeting specifications, etc. We have a retained for third party testing. So again, I mentioned before that the specs we care about are the color, the moisture content, the protein, and the fat. So we have a, a record of all of those for every load that we ship out. We have our Dakota Gold is kind of our premium product where uh, for international buyers is what we would be selling. And here's our specifications for that, where moisture is less than 12%, fat between three and a half and 6.5%, protein uh, at least 28%, and uh, color uh, greater than uh, 48. And so on this one, color is 54, the moisture is 11.7, the protein is 29, and the fat is at 5.4%. So the pro fat protein plus fat on this one is over 34, which uh, for nutritionists, that's a, a big number for a, for a lot of guys. So the, the other one is the color. Uh, we generally, for, out of here, run in the, the mid to high 50s. Our minimum is 48, but that's just a, a, a good indicator of how well, uh, how cool that your dryers are uh, that I talked about. And, and uh, it's also an indicator of lower sugar because the sugars will caramelize and, and, and create a darker feed product. Uh, that's important. Not so much, I don't know how much on a nutrition side, but when you have high sugar, your flowability suffers because sugars are sticky. So, so that's a good indicator there. And you can see this one is, is very, very loose. And so by the time, even by the time it goes overseas and arrives somewhere, you should have good uh, ability to unload the product. A couple other things to note um, on, the, on the distiller's grains, about 70% uh, of the weight we bring in of the bushel goes into making ethanol. About 30% is what's left over for the feed side between the DDGs and the corn oil. Um, so that's how the, how, because that 70% is basically the starch content. Distillers are, are a really nice complement to the, the U.S. exports corn and exports uh, ethanol and exports DDGs. So they are part, part of the portfolio. From this plant and the Macon plant as well in Missouri, we're far. We're at the southern end of the Corn Belt, so our product we're we're closer to New Orleans than almost any other ethanol plants in production. So all of our product will go by truck to the river, of the Mississippi, and then down by barge to New Orleans. And so that's a big part of our local of where our sales go. We don't rail them out. Uh, we, if we rail them, we lose some of our geographical advantage uh, economically. So for us, uh, it makes the most sense to uh, export out of New Orleans. And we ship one to two barges per week, generally, out of Missouri uh, to international markets. So those are some of the key aspects of the process. Again, wish you were here to see all this. Uh, but again, hope, to, hope you've uh, learned more about uh, DDGs, particularly with regard to POET DDGs uh, through this presentation.